and we are live. Hello, hello, Dixie Bell Paint fans. It is Melissa coming to you live from the dining room floor for a little play with some paint in a puppy show. I, I didn't have the heart to ask her to leave when I started. She was all snuggled up, so it's gonna be the paint and puppy show. Ignore, ignore this little silly beast laying here by my feet. So hi, welcome, how are you today? I am going to be working on this cute little credenza. She's kind of like a mini credenza slash, I don't know, console table maybe. And we're gonna play with some paint today. And here's the deal. I don't really have a plan, y'all. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants. What I do know is that these little panels right here on the front of each of these drawers fit something perfectly. And it has inspired me to open up all of the paint and kind of base my project off of this. So have you seen this new decoupage paper? This is called the Colorful Tiles. This is a brand new decoupage paper from Dixie Bell under their Bells and Whistles line. It is really, really pretty. So what do I like about these papers? Well, I like the fact that they are rice paper. That means they're a little bit thicker. So normally when I was doing decoupage before, it would like, Sometimes it would rip, sometimes it would go down crooked and I couldn't get it off and it was very stressful. These are like the non-stress version of decoupage papers. So this is what I'm gonna base my project off of. So do you see all these colors right here? I basically took every single blue that's on here and put them on the floor. <laughs> so I will tell you with each color that I'm using, um, how I'm using it and what I'm using as I go along. So let's see. I can see some people hopping on. I might not be able to see your comments, but I promise I'll go back in and watch afterwards and answer any questions I might have. So from that decoupage paper, I took some, some of these sheets out and I cut them up. Look at what these fit perfectly. Look at these little decoupage papers. So I painted one little square over here already in uh, some Savannah Mist and some Mint Julep just to kind of like get it dry enough because we're gonna play with some decoupage paper today and Hello, how cute is that? So cute, so cute. So this little panel, these two little panels are gonna have this. I also on the floor, and I probably won't get that far today, we'll definitely do decoupage papers, but I also have on the floor um, my Boho Soul Transfer. This transfer has some really pretty little feathers and some really cutie little things on here that I think might be a good match. So when I get an ugly little table like this, I overdo it. I always overdo it. I like to put all of the things on these tiny tables um, because usually they're so ugly and weird. Why not make them weirder? Why not put all the, all the crap on here? <laughs> so we're going to play with some papers, play with some transfers, and play with some paint. Let's begin, shall we? All right, so I have a bunch of brushes on the floor. To begin with, I've cleaned this piece with white lighting, and then I came in here and did like a little scuff sand on all the kind of shiny parts. So I also filled some holes. This piece when came, it had those ugly bat wing pulls that nobody likes, you know, the ugly bat wing ones. Um, and I went through my stash. I often when I go to, to different craft stores buy their discounted hardware. So I got two of these from my stash and they're gonna go on the front of each drawer. So combined with the colorful tiles, this is feeling very Mediterranean to me. So we're gonna go Mediterranean inspired, okay? All right, let's do it. So I always work kind of dark to light. I feel like I'm gonna start darker at the base, but we're also gonna be using a tool today that you might not have used in your painting before. Look at my very well-loved spatula. <laughs> we're gonna use this spatula painting today too. All right, let's put our base down so we know where we're going. Excuse me, puppy, I don't wanna run you over. Yikes, she's like laying right here using my leg as a pillow. Anytime I sit on the floor, my dogs think that I'm fair game and that I'm here to serve them, which nine times out of 10, it's very true. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've stayed in one spot because I can't move because there's a puppy sleeping on me. So we will just let her stay here and be a sleeping beauty while we work, all right? All right, so I'm gonna do the other door so I can start to get this dry. I did this one first with a little of that Savannah Mist and a little mint julep just so I can get it dry because we're gonna, we're gonna put those papers on and we're gonna paint over top of them. I don't want them perfect. I don't want them super clean. I kind of want to mess them up. So I have on the floor a brush. I'm gonna take my Savannah Mist and cover this area. So since this is being cleaned with white lightning and I'm given a tiny little scuff sand because it was not really shiny, but kind of plasticky, I wanted to like give it some of my 
tooth to grab onto. I always like to say it's just easier to put paint on something that's a little bit more roughed up. So we're gonna paint this area. I also didn't sand back my mud complete perfect on purpose because I'm gonna be putting decoupage paper on there. You're not really gonna see that part. If you haven't tried deco pa decoupage paper before because you were nervous like me, I think that now is the time to give it a go. Because the new rice paper from Dixie Bell has the ability to be a little bit more less terrible, if that makes sense. Terrible, but terrible. I mean like terrible, like rippable. It's, it's easier to work with because you can really get at it and move it around. Like I've even taken it, put it down in certain places, not liked it and taken it off and put it back on. <laughs> it's that durable. So it's just is that little bit thicker. It has these fibers in it that are kind of holding it together and keeping it a little bit more, less like a tissue paper. So for me, it's safer to play with. So we're gonna put down a base. We're gonna work on the front of this today. I've got a piece of tape here because I've covered my holes and I won't be able to get the darn doors open again if I, if I do another <laughs> project here without my holes. I usually stick a screwdriver in there and pull it open, but because I took them away with my mud, I've put a piece of tape down here to just help me pull this open. So let's start at the bottom. Let's go dark. When I look at these colorful tiles, because remember, I'm basing my colors kind of off of this. I like this dark here. So on the floor, I grab some Bunker Hill and I also grab some Palmetto because I don't want it to be true colors. You're gonna see me not use a lot of um, clean brushes today, okay? We're gonna muddy up my brushes and we're gonna get a little dirty in here. We're gonna make it a fun kind of a mess. All right, sound like a plan? I wish I could see your comments, but there's a little thing on here saying, I don't know what it's saying, stars or something crazy. You, FYI, the stars thing on here means nothing. If you were to donate stars and contribute a monetary value towards Dixie Bell, they are donating the proceeds of that. Um, so just ignore the stars, but it takes up my place where I see my comments usually. So it makes it difficult for me to pop up and see what everybody's saying. <laughs> I lose them really fast. So. We will just ignore those stars and I'll come back and read my comments later. Let's grab another brush. I have my spray misting bottle filled with water and some Bunker Hill, okay? So I'm gonna take this Bunker Hill and I'm gonna kind of just start at the base because this is gonna be a really blue, colorful piece. I want it to be kind of washed out. So let's start here with a little bit of this blue. I swear, my, my puppy is literally laying on my leg, snoring, right in front of the wheels, so I can't turn my dresser. She's getting in the way. But I can't make her go away because she's too sweet and too snuggly. Okay, so I have some Bunker Hill here. Let's add a little bit of Bunker Hill kind of up in this crack. All right, what I do to one side, I'm gonna do to the other. We're just gonna start to mash some of these colors around and lay a base. Once we lay this base down, I'm able to kind of paint drag and move some stuff around. Okay, so I like this. So we have Savannah Mist, a little bit of mint julep, and we have Bunker Hill down here. Okay, I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna dip into some Palmetto. Palmetto is really pretty green, but none of these colors are gonna stay true right now. I'm just kind of washing them out and making a base for my my mix, because I'm gonna get in here and mix these all up. Can you see the base? I think you can. We're good, we're good. All right, so Palmetto comes in here and goes in, kind of messing up my Bunker Hill, making that color look honestly a little bit more antebellum. But again, base, just the base coat. All right, so now I'm gonna put this brush down. Now look at what else I have on the floor and let's look at the colorful tiles again. I see some beige and I see some light blue. Let's start bringing some of these light blues up here. I have some sea glass and I have some the gulf. Let's use the gulf and a new brush because I wanna kinda of bring it up together. So the reason I'm changing brushes is because this tone is, is fairly dark and I wanna move into like a little bit of a lighter, a little bit of a lighter tone. And I know I'm missing comments, I'm so sorry. Let's see. <laughs> Somebody's asking what I'm using as my base. This is part of the, um, the Bells and Whistles line from Dixie Bell. This is the new decoupage paper called Colorful Tiles. And if you'd like to shop any of the products that I am using today, I did put a little link above my head so you're able to uh, hop over there and check them out. So let's take a little bit of the Gulf. 
and see what happens when we bring it up. I'm liking these blues. I'm feeling like it's still looking Mediterranean. And we're gonna definitely do a lot of blending. Again, with the puppy in the way, that's okay, we'll work around her. She deserves her snuggles over here. Let's add this. Okay, so now I'm starting to build a little bit of a, a color ombre blend. Put a little bit here. Sometimes it's fun to go into things and not really have like a definite plan because that's when the magic starts to happen. That's when the fun stuff starts to happen is when you don't have like a, a set plan of what's happening, you're able to really kind of have a lot of fun. <laughs> It's a lot more fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my mint julep color with that first brush that I used on the doors over here. I'm gonna add my second coat to this area because I do want it to get dry for the colorful tiles. And let's pull some of this over here and start to see what happens, shall we? You never go wrong with like a mess of blues. It always looks so pretty. Okay, so we have the mint julep. We have mixed up some palmetto. We mixed up some bunker hill. Let's go one brush lighter. Let's see what's on the floor here. Let's choose this top color that I was using, which is the Savannah Mist. So let's take some Savannah Mist and just light up the top. This whole piece would be painted, including the top. Um, but I tend to kind of go like dark to light like this. I just like the graduated layers. So we're going to lay this color down. And we're going to see what happens. How are we doing? We still hanging in? But I really want to be able to do the colorful tiles and show you how easy they are to use because I think that you'll be surprised with the decoupage paper, how easy it is to use and how much of a difference it makes on a piece. It really packs a powerful punch to add such a nice soft tile, a fake tile, if you will. I kind of think like, every time I look at these and cut them up, I'm like, I should cut these up and put them on the, the back plate of my staircase. My husband would probably kill me, but I really would love to just like faux tile, that whole white spot, like all the back part of the treads when you walk up the stairs. I think it'd be gorgeous to do that. It, it might happen. It might be a Dixie Bell video someday. <laughs> Stay tuned. You never know. It could. Stranger things have happened. So I'm dampening my brush and I'm, and I'm still just laying down this base layer. I just want to work on this, this front piece to kind of get an idea of how it's going to happen. The sides are easy. I can really come in later and, and add whatever I wish. It'll be reminiscent on the sides of what's happening on the front. That's a bit better. Now I can see. And I'm also going to really distress this, I think, too. I might come in and do a little bit of wet distressing later on. Um, remove some of the paint so some of the wood shows through because I feel like this is going to be more of a, a kind of a rustic piece once it's done. Once I add those tiles and give it that kind of Mediterranean vibe, it's going to change the look. Okay, I want to go back and I want to put more of that green in here. This mint julep just looks so pretty to me. I just don't want the base to be all one color. I want to kind of change it up some. So let's add some of that back in before we start to drag some colors around and blend, do some blending. How are we hanging in? You made it midway to the week. Our pollen situation in Richmond is still crazy. If you know the South, you know that it snows pollen in the spring. Everybody gets a nice dose of allergies. Even when you're not allergic, it affects everybody. Okay, so let's do a quick color recap. We have in these little block spaces, Savannah Mist, Mint Julep. I came down to the bottom with Bunker Hill, added a bit of Palmetto, and then kind of came up with some, let's see, the Gulf, which 
is really pretty. I think I'm going to put some back up here. Let's go back up here and put some of the gulf up in the top section to kind of change the color a little bit. You ever see those old doors on Pinterest? I have this weird obsession with like looking at old doors on Pinterest, like old sun bleached where the wind and the, the rain and the ocean has taken off all the layers of paint. So I, I kind of have a thing about that. Like I really like that look. So I often use old doors for my inspo. So let's try and make this one like an old door, shall we? Which means multiple colors, multiple layers, and getting it kind of faded out by the sun. This cabinet is actually really weirdly skinny. It's only 12 inches deep, I think. So the sides are really not very big. Majority of the focus on this piece is the front. All right, I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of mint julep. I don't want it to be too perfect. You never want your colors, if you're trying to like look like an old door, it has to be super random. You can't make it seem like it's too planned, all right? Okay, so now next step is to hit it with the heat gun because I wanna do some blending and I don't wanna pull off the hard work that I just did. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna put my specs on so I can see some comments. Let's see. Is it raining green and where you are too? Is the pollen getting you? Ugh, the pollen. It's like the bane of my existence right now. You can see it falling off the trees and blowing around the whole entire neighborhood. It's disgusting. Super gross. Should we have a puppy break? Should we wake her up so you can see her? She's not waking up. <laughs> She's not doing it. Let's see. I missed that. See the comments? I can't see the comments because of that stars thing at the bottom. But I will come back in and answer them later, I promise. I normally have a moderator on here with me, but I don't think there is one today. So if you know the answer that somebody's asking while I'm busy running my mouth, feel free to hop in and uh, answer a question for me. I always appreciate my know-it-alls on, on the Dixie Belle paint page. You guys have a lot of knowledge. There is a lot of people out here that hold a lot of really great knowledge. Okay. Let's do a little bit of decoupage because I don't want my decoupage tiles to be perfect. I want my, my paint to kind of come around them and make it part of the piece. So let's turn this a little bit so you can see. So remembering I'm taking my colorful tiles, decoupage paper, which is available under the bells and whistles line from Dixie Bell. This paper is actually really big and it's rice paper, okay? This is 11, uh, 11 inches, 11.75 by 16. 0.5, okay, which is, is big. It's a lot of paper here. And when I use things, I tend to cut them up. So I've cut up strips of tile here. Let's just take some and start with how we're gonna lay them out. Pick whatever you want to start with. And I'm gonna show you how I do my um, decoupage because it's super easy, super easy peasy. Okay, so on the floor I have clear coat. You can use clear coat, you can use gator hide, you can use um, a decoupage blend if you need to, but flat or satin seems to be just fine for me. I will have a fresh clean brush for this. Okay, and I'm gonna dip into my clear coat. So I've got flat right here. This area is dry. Remember I painted this panel first before I hopped on so that I could do this. Let me turn it a little bit more. Oh, honestly, I mean, why do I try not to make a mess? It just makes it worse. So this weird little cabinet has kind of like angles you can see, all right, we're good. I'm gonna come in here. Now here's the deal, these little tiles that I've cut are not exactly the, the width. So I'm gonna actually lay them like tile. So we're gonna put them down. Since this is clear, nobody's gonna see this anyways, right? I'm gonna put it down and give it some space and make it look like a real tile because I don't want it to be completely to one edge or completely to the top, if that makes sense, okay? So now your, your decoupage paper's there. You're like, oh, now what do I do? Well, you just take your brush and you brush the rest of your clear coat on and you're able to make the front of your piece start to look like an old Mediterranean door. Should I tip you? Should I take you on a little journey over here with my camera? See if you can come in a little closer? So easy, right? Look at how cute that is. Look at that cute tile. Now the reason I did the back of this piece under this little tile in that kind of greeny blue color is to make it pretty much disappear. Plus I wanted that tile space, right? I wanted to make it look like a real tile. So again with the clear coat, let's grab another one. 
and I'm going to space it like they're real tiles, right? Because why wouldn't I? Now see, look, you can peel them off and put them back on. Th this rice paper has the ability to be a little bit more sturdy. It just gives you that little leeway that if you put it down in the wrong spot, you can pick it back up. There's no wrinkles, there's no bubbles. Seriously, how cute is that? So cute. Let's just keep going. Couple more, and then I'm gonna have to cut the bottom one because it will be um, a little bit too short, you know what I mean? So let's do that. Let's keep adding your clear coat and just decoupage these cutest little tiles on here. I'm also going to be adding paint kind of over top of them and fading them out. So now this one, the next one down is going to have to be cut. So this is how I'm going to plan it. I'm going to just kind of like fake it a little bit and I'm going to see where my line is. Making that line on my sheet, I'm able to take my scissors and just cut it. Okay, so just cut it. Save it because, hello, I save all my scraps for a lot of projects. So let's lie this bottom tile down here. Again with the clear coat and just put it and space it a little bit more. That makes me happy. All right, perfect. So now, now can you see the inspo for this piece? How this little table is becoming like a Mediterranean cutie. Is this side dry? Should we do both sides and then work around it? Let's do it. Oh my gosh, please don't follow me. Please don't follow me. Sorry, did I wake you up, puppy? Are you joining the party? Can you see my cuteness down here? <laughs> Peek her little face. Okay, so this is dry, so let's do the same thing. Add our little clear coat. Again, I'm using flat for no other reason than it was on the floor. So that's the color I'm gonna use. I wanna mix it up. I don't wanna use the same ones on both sides. I want to, uh, I wanna switch it a little bit. So I'm gonna come in here and space them out. Remember, knowing that I want that fake tile look, I'm just laying it down and then taking the same brush and smoothing it on. It's that easy, okay? Yes, I got a little bit of paint on there because my thing wasn't completely dry. That's okay, because we're gonna add some stuff on here. All right, so let's go down to the next one. The next tile. Oh, now you're waking up, puppy, huh? The next tile is going to be what color? Let's pick a colorful one because we have some color here. Let's do this one. I love that one. It's so hard to lay things out when I'm trying to like not put my back to you guys on camera, but it's impossible. <laughs> I kind of have to, kind of have to. I'm glad the mic works again though for Facebook because that's gonna help me. Now see, this wasn't dry all the way. Let's fix this and then dry it. Where's my paper towel? There we go. Let's come down here and just dry this area real quick before I start slamming some decoupage paper on there. Good enough, good enough. All right, so I'm gonna lay down some more clear coat and pick another tile. Let's go dark. Perfection, perfection. Okay, now this bottom one here too. Let's remember, I just use my finger to kind of like line it off. So I'm just gonna lay it here, take my finger, make that line with my finger, and that allows me just to see exactly where to cut it. And again, totally doesn't have to be perfect because I'm gonna be adding paint over top of this. We're gonna drag some paint over top. Do you like the tile? Do you like this look? Is this cute? I feel like this is a, a weird little cabinet, so it kind of had to have a weird little, uh, had to have a different vibe. It couldn't be boring. Also, who wants to be boring? I don't want to paint boring. I want to paint like colorful and exciting. Okay, so now our fake tile from the colorful tiles decoupage paper is up, right? This is where we're going to start to play with some paint. I'm going to go back to my original layout, which is the Bunker Hill down here and start to put my second layer of paint on because now I'm gonna start moving some stuff around. This is where it gets fun for me. So I have my bunker hill 
and I'm going to put a little bit of palmetto. Let's put a little palmetto over here. Okay. Now you have a couple different options here. You can blend it like this and just make it kind of seamlessly dissolve and pull some color up from the base. Or you could take your best dang brush, my new favorite brush, FYI. Did you know this is back in stock? You can buy this now. It was sold out for a million years, but now it's back in stock. So if you need this brush and it's very reasonably priced, okay, go check it out. Click the little link above my head, go under tools, find your brushes. This is a 70% um, synthetic, 30% no, 70% natural, 30% synthetic brush that really, really, really does some fun things with blending. I'm gonna show you how. So you wet it, you keep a paper towel on the floor because you're gonna to wanna to blot it off. And you can actually mix your colors just by rubbing this brush and causing like a faded effect. Which I'm gonna do on this piece because it kind of gives a really nice little swirl motion. It just blends your paint so easily. You guys, there's honestly no joke how fast that is. So easy. This is my new favorite tool for blending. All right, so now I'm gonna continue up my pattern. Let me move my little handles out of the way so I don't get them all dirty. So next we had like a little bit of the gulf. Let's put a little gulf here. And then I'm gonna just start to make a mess. All right, so know that my base colors are Bunker Hill, Palmetto, we have the Gulf, Savannah Mist, Mint Julep, okay? I'm gonna mash now. We're gonna, there's no continuity anymore. This is going to be a big giant hodgepodge of all the colors. So, if you have anxiety about, you know, mixing up all your paints, this is not the one for you. <laughs> this is how we roll over here. We like a mess. We like to uh, blend our paint, get messy, and have some fun. So I'm gonna lay this paint all down and we're gonna to start to pull it up and then I'm gonna get my spatula out, okay? Okay, so using a damp besting brush and keeping a paper towel handy to kind of blot it off because we're super contaminating all of our colors now, right? I'm gonna to start to just mash some stuff around. Let's move some paint. Basically, that's all this is, is paint moving. We're gonna bring it down, we're gonna bring it up. And we're gonna just make a blended beauty. I'm gonna blot it off again, wipe it, blot it, wipe it, blot it. And again, this is something that's gonna take some layers. We're gonna build, we're gonna build some layers. It's getting hot in here, I wish I could put a fan on, but then nobody can hear me. Okay. So rubbing in these circles is building. My colorful tiles can start to get a little bit contaminated with paint because I don't want them to be perfect. I kind of want to fade them out a little bit. I feel like I need more Book of hill over here. And let's spray this and move it around. How are we doing? We're hanging in? I can't see your comments still, but throw me some love. I want to see some hearts. I can always see those. Tell me that you like this look. I feel like this is a, a freeing way to paint, not being locked into worrying about staying in the lines. Who wants to color in the lines? I don't want to color in the lines. I want to have some fun with what I'm doing. So using my best dang brush as my blending tool to really move that paint around, I'm going to work in sections and then I'm going to come back in here and we're going to do some wet distress and spatula painting too, okay? Okay, so now that I kind of have like a little base color going on, let me show you what a wet distress is. You can use a rag, you can use baby wipes, you can use um, paper towel. I like baby wipes because they, they kind of don't rip. Let's go in and wipe some of this off so that some of this wood peeks through. See how easy it is to take some of that paint off versus sanding? It gives you more of a, um, a defined line this is more of a, a gentle, kind of remove a little bit of what's on here. Just gives it more of a natural, a natural distress, if you ask me. So I like to kind of rub some of this off and then work my way up the project, okay? Because this little blended beauty, remember we're, we're using like kind of like an old door as an inspo. 
this was an old door, there would definitely be some paint missing, especially on the corners where people touch stuff all the time. When you think about distressing, think about it that way too. Don't go like a big Dalmatian. <laughs> That's like the worst thing. When I see somebody who takes like a piece and just like distresses it all over the place, I'm like, what? There's no rhyme or reason to that. You need to, you need to think about where this would naturally happen. It makes me a little squirrely. So, just saying, think about these things. Let's go back in with the Savannah Mist. I kind of can't work on both doors at the same time. I would have to be sitting directly in front of this piece and I can't do that. So we're just depositing that color down. I'm gonna put a little bit more mint julep up here. And now let me really kind of give my brush, my best dang brush a wash because this has maybe some Bunker Hill in it that I don't want to see. So I'm going to just wipe it off on paper towel and we're going to blend some colors together. All right. So again, with the kind of circular motions, I find that using a circular motion helps keep this paint looking a little bit more cloudy. And it's really pretty. And then we're gonna get in here with my spatula and I'm gonna show you some spatula painting. Okay, sweet. Let's come over here and see what's happening. It's just kind of cloudy painting these colors together. I think I need some more over here. And then we're going to start to rub some off. I find this brush works best when it's wet. I just like a damp blend. So can you see how pretty that kind of cloudy look comes to it? Like it just takes it and transforms that really clean ombre to like a really dirty one. Let's see if I can move you in even closer. All right. Oh, goodness. Shaky, shaky. All right, we're good. We're closer. That's okay. So let's do a little wet distressing, shall we? I'm going to take our baby wipe and we're going to rub. Our paint isn't dry all the way yet, right? We're still working kind of in smaller sections. And we're just taking some of the paint off because I want to, I want to see what's under here. I want to build these layers. We're going to get out the spatula next, but I want to take off some of this clean paint. I don't want it to be so perfect. And this just does work best when it's, when it's damp. So if your baby wipe gets a little dry, just hit it with your spray misting bottle and you're able to kind of reactivate it and pull some of that off. See how it looks a little bit more natural versus a, like when you come in here with your sandpaper, if this was actually dry, you would get more of a clean edge. This is giving me more of a, a raw edge. I need to take more off. Turn my little table. And take some off. Okay, I need new, I need new white. Where did I put them? Where, oh, where, oh, behind me. <laughs> We're still hanging in. How you guys doing? Do you like the wet distress versus a dry? What's your preference? What do you like as, a, as an artist? Do you find that, you know, wiping it off organically works a little bit better for a distress than coming in with when it's dry? I, I just, I think it looks better. So I'm just gonna pull some of it off with this wet baby wipe. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Is it looking more Moroccan theme now? Is it looking a little bit more natural? We're still not there. Let's start to do a little bit of some spatula painting. Okay, so you know those little spatulas you get from Dixie Belle? They're plastic. This one has got a seen better days. <laughs> it really has seen better days. Um, but to be honest with you, 
I don't know where they go. I lose them all the time. So this is the only one I have left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag some paint. So now we've got this kind of like sun faded bleached front. We've added the beautiful colorful tiles from the decoupage paper. We've cut them up and we've you know stuck them on there with some clear coat. It's looking it's looking pretty. I'm, I'm loving this blend right here. I'm liking this kind of darker coming up. Let's work up here. So when you think of contrasting colors, you would think of using um, red or yellow. I don't want to do too much of that because I feel like it's going to take away from the tiles. So I've got some moonshine metallics on the floor and the beautiful Caribbean, which is a gorgeous iridescent blue. The good thing about using metallics is that you can use them to drag some paint um, but it also gives you kind of a fade because when this dries it dries different than regular paint metallics have a shimmer right they have a, a beautiful shimmer so you can pull them down something and make a shiny iridescent effect without like changing too much so I've put it on here on the spatula let's go up here and start to like pull some paint down a little bit I'm also going to pull off some of the original finish because I'm working on an area that's not 100% dry, but I'm going to start to drag my paint. Using a spatula or a stick or a, um, a different style of brush is going to allow you to get a different effect. We're going to start to build some layers. Let's start to change the way that this piece looks a little bit. We're going to take it from dirty or from clean to a little bit more dirty. Okay, you can drag it all the way up, you can drag it all the way down. Just little touches of this metallic are going to change it. And I'm going to show you how you can kind of manipulate it. So here is a um, rusty, crusty old um, French tip. Okay, so say you come in here and you look at it and you're dragging some paint colors and you just want to kind of soften it. This actually has some dirt on it already, some Dixie dirt. I don't even care because I'm going to be dirting up this piece. I just want to kind of move some of this paint around. So I don't want to move all of my scrapes, but I do want to manipulate it so that it's not as perfect. So let's start to touch everything. This is where finger painting comes in too, okay? You can take your fingers, wet them, and start to like tap everything and move it around. Move it, spray it, spray your metallics, make some gorgeous drips. There's no rules in this game. You can do it however you want to do it. But I just know that I don't like too much of a clean edge. So wherever I see too much of a big scrape, I'm gonna wanna take some of this back. Um, by using this really pretty brush that has a ability to be more natural bristle, it's gonna give you that effect. Okay, so that's, that's the beautiful Moonshine Metallics right there. By dragging it down and adding some shimmer, Let's, let's put a little right here, right on, on the tiles. Let's come right up here. Let's drag some shimmer down. Things are better when they have interest, when they're a little dirty. <laughs> when they have more visual interest, they just flow better. It just looks better. So we're gonna dirty up some of these tiles. Let's add some moonshine metallics so that this piece shimmers in the light. And I'm just putting it on there with my spatula. Okay, so you can also see um, we could add some age with a darker gray. So on the floor, I put some gravel road. Gravel road is like a, a really good dirt color, if that makes sense. Gravel road has a, a nice dark brown that mimics real dirt on a piece quite well. Okay, so it's got this beautiful gravel road. I'm gonna take that same brush and we're gonna to start to add some junk. Let's add, let's dirty this up. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna dab it off so I don't have a ton of product on here. Let's start to add some dirt down here. Think about where your dirt would naturally be occurring. Well, it would happen in the corners, right? It would happen in the bottom corners and it would happen where people put their hands. I haven't decided placement on my handles yet, but I know that I'm going to be putting them kind of in the center. So we're gonna take these handles and we're gonna stick them right here. Wherever I put these handles, there's gonna be dirt coming down from them because I wanna add this age. I wanna add this like bit of darkness to my piece. So coming in over top of the tiles that we already laid, our fake tiles, we fake tiled today. <laughs> We're gonna add some dirt. You can move it around. You can decide if you wanna come in here with your best dang brush and your rag and kind of like bring it back, it's up to you. You don't have to like totally dirty it up. You can medium dirty it up. 
I make these words up as I go along. Medium dirty, heavy dirty. We're just making it dirty. So just taking this gravel road and adding this darkness in here. Well, hello, Sleeping Beauty. You wanna say hi to the camera? You say hi to my babies? You're a good girl snoring over here in the corner the whole time, huh? Good thing we're doing a textured look on this piece because there's probably gonna be a hundred dog hairs in there. <laughs> Best kind. Best kind. So let's keep adding a little bit more dirt. And so you can manipulate that area and keep kind of like brushing it in. Or you can take your best dang brush and buff it out a little. It's up to you. We just don't want those tiles to be completely clean, right? We want to give it a little bit more of a, of a life. We don't want it to look too perfect because that would be boring. So what do you think, you guys? That is pretty much all I wanted to teach you today. Do you like it? Do you like this look? This kind of blended beauty with the pat spatula painting? Wanna pick another color? Let's go back in. Let's take some of this, this gravel road on my spatula. Let's show you what a little bit of dark can do on your piece. How it can add some visual interest in the corners. By pulling it down and giving it some, some dirt, just giving it some I mean, you can touch all the edges if you wanted. Start to add some visual interest this way. It's entirely up to you. See how pretty that is? So pretty. I wish the space was bigger so I could just drag it straight down the middle, but it's not. I like, I like when it does these like little kind of faded out dirts. I don't want it to be too perfect. So this is a good way to dirty up your piece, to add a little bit of visual interest. You start to make these things happen, play with your paint and create something that is a lot of fun. Something that's an individual piece because you cut up your decoupage paper, you're able to create something um, magical based on these colors. Based on these colors, this entire piece is coming together. What do you think? Pretty cute, right? Pretty cute. So. If you are a Top Drawer RVA follower, that's great. Come on over to my page because uh, I think I'm just gonna keep working. I'm gonna come over there and go live over there on my own page and finish this little guy up because this is a fast way of painting when you're removing what you're doing as you're going along. You know, you're using your wet wipes to kind of pull stuff back and make that distress happen. You don't have to have that full, perfect two coats of paint. You're able to really get in there and make this beautiful aged piece start to happen. Can you see now how it looks like an old door? Does it look like an old Mediterranean door? <laughs> I think it does. It's really cute. Let me give you a recap of the colors, even though I mashed them all up and they're not perfect anymore. I used at the base, Bunker Hill, coming up into Mint Julep. I had the Gulf, Savannah Mist, um, and then I kind of spread it around. This is the gravel road which is this you know, paint dragging that we talked about to make it a little bit more aged. I got in here with the Moonshine Metallics and this is Caribbean, that beautiful blue. The tiles that you're seeing here on my piece are actually decoupage papers that are available from the Bells and Whistles line over there on, on Dixie Bell paint page. And I cut them up and stuck them on there like real tiles. It's a lot of fun. It's a cute little piece. And I think it's a fast way to paint and I'll finish it quickly. So come on over to the Top Tour RVA where we will sit together and get this guy done. My puppy has left the room. I have more room to turn my table around. Thank you for puppies and paint today. On this Wednesday, I will be back 3 p.m. next week on the Dixie Bell Paint page with a brand new project where we can sit on the floor and play with paint. I hope everybody has a great day. I will chat with you later. Bye.